You're probably aware that you need to keep your accounting records. But do you know which records you need to keep and for how long? If not, you should watch this video until the end. Hi, my name is Melchior from Contest Tax Consulting, and it won't be a surprise to you when I tell you that you somehow need to keep your accounting records. However, I often hear that there's quite a lot of confusion about, first of all, which documents have to be kept, and secondly, for how long. In commercial law and in tax law, there are two deadlines that you should be aware of. One is a retention period of six years and the other of 10 years. Let's start with the retention period of 10 years. That's the period that's also generally fairly well known. You always have to keep your core tax documents for 10 years. That is, your own invoices, the invoices you receive, your bank statements, your tax returns, advanced sales tax returns, your inventory, and your financial statements. So it's fair to say that you actually need to keep the core tax records for 10 years and also keep them in such a way that they can actually be viewed and retrieved for 10 years. But what many people don't know is that you also have to keep other records. For example, a retention period of six years applies to business correspondences. That means letters you send, but also emails and other correspondences have to be kept but also offers your dunning letters, contracts, etc. All information that is crucial to get a better understanding of your tax situation have to be kept. And many people actually don't know that you also have to keep the dunning letters and offers for six years. But why should you actually do that? So what would happen if you actually threw away all your accounting records every year? Well, in the event of an audit, the tax office has the option of guesstimating the basis of your taxation. This means that they just go and simply estimate your sales and profits if, for example, you don't have records from eight years ago. And when the tax office does that, it's usually to your disadvantage. So you'll have to pay a lot of back taxes. And in the worst case, you can even be accused of intent. And in that case, it is quite possible that this will be considered tax evasion. And tax evasion can mean prison time. At this point, another very, very important note. There's a frequent mistake I often see, both from freelancers as well as accountants with the retention period. The crucial question is, when does the period of 10 or six years actually start? The law states that the time limit begins only at the end of the year in which the document was created. And this means, for example, if you file your tax return or your accountant files your tax return for 2020, only February 2022, that can happen. And if you use an accountant, that's still within the legal limits. However, this means that the document 2020 tax return will not be created until February 2022. This means that the 10 year retention period does not start until the end of 2022. The 10 years therefore only begin on January 1st, 2023 and only come to an end at the end of December 2032. This means that the retention period for the 2020 tax return in this example does not end until the end of the day on December 31st, 2032. Intuitively, you would say that keeping the 2020 tax return until 2032 would be more than 10 years and unnecessary. This is, after all, more than 12 years. But you actually have to be really mindful of when which document was actually created and what they might still be relevant for. You are really only on the safe side if you keep your documents about two to three years longer than the six or 10 years. I hope this video has given you a good overview of when you're allowed to destroy which documents and how long to keep them. If you're self-employed or freelance and you're saying to yourself, tax regulations are about as attractive as athlete's foot, let's have my accountant take care of that, then I have a great tip for you. We are specialized online accountants and are happy to help you with all your tax crap. I'll link all the relevant information about our services here, but you're also welcome to visit our online community where you can ask all your questions about retention periods. I'll explain how to sign up in this video or just have a look at our other videos such as this one.